Hello, this is Peng from Levy by Example. Thank you so much for joining me today. Guess what? This is the Hello World video. So let's start as I step through creating a VI in LabVIEW. And I have LabVIEW 2017 up and running. So from the Getting Started window, let's select File, New VI. And this creates a blank VI, which stands for Virtual Instrument. So this VI contains both the front panel where the controls and indicators live and interact with the user and a block diagram, which contains the code that executes when this VI is run. Um, this code is represented by uh, icons and wires connecting those uh, um, icons together. Uh, when you save this VI, both the front panel and block diagram are saved. So let's do that now. So if I go File, Save, and then let's type Hello World. Saved. So note that if I close the block diagram, uh, the VI is still going to be there. Um, you can open up the diagram again with the uh, menu option window, show block diagram. Or you can use the shortcut. And this is something that you will use a lot, which is Control E. Uh, you push Control E when you're in the block diagram to open up the front panel. So you can go Control E, Control E, Control E all day, every day. So now to close a VI, you have to close the front panel with File Close or Window, actually um, Control W or just hitting the X in the upper right corner. So you've got options, whatever floats your boat. Uh, so let's open up that again. Okay. To create a user interface item on the front panel, right click and find the item you want to place down. So right clicking will bring up see it, uh, the controls palette. The control palette has uh, controls categorized by type and hovering over each group will open up another sub window with the controls under that category. So you've got numeric, boolean, string. Okay, got that. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna create a obligatory hello world example, but before I dive into how to do this in LabVIEW, um, let's go down the C Sharp Windows Form Road using uh, Visual Studio so that you can maybe see where we're, we're trying to go with this. So uh, I'm in Visual Studio. Um, let's go ahead and open up a new project. Kind of off the page. Let's show that. New project. From here, I'll select Visual Studio and Windows Form app, and then just hit, let's do two, because I created one before. And then I think we're good to go. So just like in LabVIEW, you'll have an area where you can add controls and indicators. So I'll need something to show text. Um, these controls and indicators can be found in the toolbox here. Uh, so if I click on common controls, I can select the label and drop that down. So let's do that now. Actually, I can just double click this guy. 
So it's this, and this, there's a label. Um, C sharp's a text-based language, so everything is referenced by name. As you can see, as I scroll down to the properties and design, uh, and we'll just keep the default label one name. So just like in LabVIEW, you've got a C sharp, um, you've got C sharp code associated with the user, user interface. I can get to that code with the menu item view code or F7. And let's bring that out a little bit. Here you see some code already written for you um, to show the hello world text when the program launches or when the form loads. Um, you need to place the code in the class constructor. And the constructor method is the method with the same name as the class. Uh, so that's where we need to plug that in. So I'll type after this line label one dot text equals hello world. Okay, let's do a save all. And I can run this using debug, start debugging, F5, or this start button here. Options. Yay. Let that compile. And as you see, we have a Hello World application running. Okay. All right. Uh, now back to LabVIEW. Got that out of the way. So I'll need something to show text. So the way I do that is um, I right click and under the string and path, um, pick string. Con so I could either pick string control or string indicator. So since I want to show um, some text, um, I want to select indicator. So I left click. And when I do that, I get a outline of the indicator that moves with my cursor until I left click again, where it'll drop that text indicator on the front panel. So if you notice, I open up the block diagram just, just to see what happened. When I did that, a icon or a terminal appeared um, automatically on the block diagram and has the same name as the label shown with this uh, on the string in indicator. So if I change this name, it changes the, uh, the terminal name as well. Okay, so, so just like uh, what we saw in, uh, in C sharp, I'll need to set a string to a string constant. So let's go into the code, which is the block diagram. So again, if this was closed, I can do a control E, get back to that. So let's move the terminal so I have room to wire, wire it to that indicator. Um, when writing LabVIEW code, always have everything flow from left to right, just like text. Um, notes, note that the stuff on the black diagram doesn't affect the look and, um, of the front panel. So I can move this around and the front panel um, element stays put. So I'll need a string constant, which can be found on the functions palette. Right click on the block diagram to bring that up. Uh, just like the controls palette, each function lives under di different roofs. Uh, so you can hover your cursor to the string and then string constant, left click. And then if I left click again, that places it on the block diagram. So I put that to the left of the indicator terminal. 
now you want to wire that constant to the text indicator, which is the same thing as writing an equal sign uh, that we saw in C sharp. To do that, you'll want to, to position the mouse so that the wiring spool cursor appears. So if you notice, based on where I place my cursor, I get different uh, cursor icons. Um, so if I'm in the middle, I can move it around. Or on the edges, I can resize it. Like so. So it's similar to how PowerPoint image editing or any image editor editor you've seen works. Okay, so the best way to get a spool is to come from the right and then move slowly into the uh, constant uh, on its uh, on its right side and then you get the spool and you'll just want to go ahead and left click and then you'll get a outline of a wire take it to the terminal until it shows that it, it's ready to connect and then you left click again and then you have a connection awesome now uh, let's set the value of this string. So if I move to the middle of that um, constant, I want to double click this time. I get a blinking carrot that indicates that I want to type some text. Let's type hello world. Okay, so you notice that this looks funky. Uh, the reason why I did that is because I resized this constant and I uh, turn off automatic resizing. So you can fix that by hitting size to text. There you go. So now back to the front panel with our control E. To run, I can do a menu option operate run control R or what a lot of people just do is hit that run arrow button. So let's do that. And voila. Oops. This world. So that was that. That runs the uh, uh, simple VI. But uh, check this out. Wasn't that run a little di different from the C sharps C, C sharp Windows forms example? So when I ran it in LabVIEW, it ran once and then quit back to the development environment, while the C Sharp example stayed in runtime until you hit the X to close out the program. Um, LabVIEW ran the code in runtime, then exited back to design time. Um, so I'll I'll show you uh, how to have your LabVIEW VIs behave like normal uh, Windows applications uh, in later tutorials and videos. Um, okay, congrats. Uh, now you know how to create code in LabVIEW. How do you feel? Excited, proud, or still confused? Well, if you got any burning comments or questions, feel free to drop them below. Or better yet, head on to LabVIEWbyExample.com for more LabVIEW tips. Until next time, see you later.